and welcome to another video. I recently started doing urban sketching, and I wanted to make myself a little portable watercolor kit. So I thought I'd film the process and show you how you can make your own. I also talk about how to choose colors for your palette. The first thing you'll need is some kind of a tin or case. I'm using this candy tin. A lot of artists have done this using an Altoid tin, that's sort of the classic, but you can really use anything you have on hand. If you're a pack rat like me, I'm sure you can find something in your house that will work for this project. Metal tins work best because they're lightweight and sturdy, and they're also magnetic, which will come in handy. But you can also reuse a plastic case like this one, or even an old makeup compact. Then you'll need something to hold your paint. This is where you can get really creative. I've seen people use bottle caps, old packaging like these blister packs, Lego bricks. You can also mold your own wells out of polymer clay. I'm gonna be using these half pans which are made for watercolors. They fit about two milliliters of paint. These actually came with my watercolor palette. I replaced them with full-size pans so I had a bunch of these left over. This palette, by the way, is from the brand Meaden. I'm pretty happy with it, it's just a little heavier than what I'd like to carry around day to day. But I will leave a link in the description if you're looking for a palette like this one. The last thing you'll need is an area to mix your paints. The easiest thing to do is to use the lid as a mixing surface, if you don't mind mixing on one large open area. You can mix directly on the metal, or you can paint it with a white enamel spray paint. That'll prevent the paint from beading on the surface and make it a little easier to judge the color. I like to have a couple of different wells to mix in, so I got these one inch square metal tins online. These are actually for cosmetics, but I think they'll work pretty well for this purpose. And I like that they're very modular, so you can arrange them in different ways in your box. I tried out a few different arrangements of my pans to see what would work best. Even though this box can fit a lot of pans, I wanted to challenge myself to use a more limited palette, so I ended up going with a simple 8 color layout. These are the colors I've chosen for my palette. The colors you pick will depend a bit on what you're planning to paint but a split primary palette like this one, with a warm and a cool shade of each primary, is a good all-around palette that will allow you to mix a really large range of secondary and tertiary colors. Here I'm painting a little color swatch card so I can easily remember what colors are in my palette. You'd be surprised how quickly you lose track, especially if you stop painting for a while. You can also write the name of the color on the wells themselves. In addition to my six primaries, I had room for two additional colors, so I chose Burnt Sienna, a reddish brown earth tone, and Shadow Violet, a warm gray that's great for quickly adding darks and neutralizing other colors. You'll notice I don't have any greens. I'm planning to mix them, and that's where having two of each primary color comes in handy. So for example, by mixing my cool yellow and my cool blue, which both have a green undertone, I can get a really vibrant green. On the other hand, if I mix my cool yellow with my warm blue, which has a bit of red in it, I get a muted olive green because of that third primary that's lurking in there. I might eventually want to add a convenience green or another earth tone. The nice thing about these DIY palettes is you can easily reconfigure them. Bye. 
Para, 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 para. 